Hi, everyone. Welcome to our ongoing series on how to create a life operating system in Notion. Today, we're going to look at the new synced blocks feature that Notion just released. It is an enhancement to a very rough hack that we've been doing for a while, and it's nice to have it as an official feature now. And with the official implementation of this feature, we have more capabilities with it. So I want to show you how it's used, how to put it into action, and share some ideas on where I think it'll be applicable. I don't typically look at individual features on this series, but this particular feature lends itself really well to comprehensive system builds. And so those of us who are designing widespread, comprehensive, well-integrated system designs within Notion, this feature is going to be particularly useful. So I wanted to share it with you guys right away so we can put it to good use in our systems. Let's dive right in. So sync blocks can now be found with the slash command, just like all of our other functionality. And if you start typing synced, it's gonna pop up. It's gonna be right there. And it's gonna create a red outline around the block. Now remember, a block is any of these units that have a six dot drag handle next to it. Now you could have multiple lines in a block if you type something, hold shift, type something, hold shift, and then they're all in the same block. But typically when you hit enter each time, it's a separate block. And within that block, you can embed a lot of different things. You can embed toggles, and then under the toggle, you can do all kinds of stuff. And all of that is under the toggle block, then each line in the toggle is also its own block. So we can work with the toggle block, including all of them, or individual blocks. Also, an inline table here is all together a block. That is the block for the entire table. Then each entry in it is itself a block because each entry is a page and each page is a block when it's embedded in another page. So the subpage would be a block as a page. So a page can be a block, a table can be a block, a line can be a block, or a group of lines can be a block. Of course, we can embed widgets and all kinds of other stuff. Those will all be blocks as well. So now that we know what a block is, let's look at what we can do with them with the synced blocks feature. So we created the synced block here, and let's just type out, this is a synced block. Now we have the ability to take this block click on it, copy and sync, and we can paste this here. Now we have these two blocks that are synced together and all changes and additions are synced across both of them. Now this is perhaps less useful when they're right next to each other, but this synced block can be in any other page in your system anywhere. And this opens up a lot of capability and a lot of efficiency. So when we have a block that is updated, it will automatically be updated and in sync across all the locations elsewhere. We've had this feature before in a very crude, hacky way, what I used to call mirrored blocks and what others have called global blocks. You would take the URL and cut part of it out and take the snippet and move this part and then embed it. And it was very hard and slow to implement. It was just clumsy, but it did work. And I used it in one instance for the guiding principles. Now with the synced block official feature, it's very easy to do. You just create a synced block copy it. It's also going to give you a count of the number of places that it's synced to and a list of each of the locations. So let's look at them on different pages. If we had a new page, synced block two, and now we paste it because I had already had it in my clipboard when I copied it before, and now it's in two locations, twice on the first page and once on the second page. And it indicates this is the second page and which is the original. Not that it really matters because they're all synced. You have just any of them anywhere, they will all sync together. Now, how can we put this to good use? Say you create a table, and this could be any table view. It could be a Kanban board, it could be a calendar view, anything, or any other criteria. You can now create a sync block from this. There isn't an option to turn it into a sync block, but you can just drag it into one. Create a sync block and drag it into the sync block. Now this block is synced. Now we copy it, and we go over to our other page and we paste it. Now the block is here. So now if we had a filter here and our tag is tag two, it filters for tag two. Come back to the first one and it's filtered for tag two. So this is useful when you want to have the exact same view of a table in multiple places in your system. It's going to update the view settings as well as the information within it. If you just want the information within it, or you want a similar version, but not exactly the same, then you duplicate it and move the duplication into the new location. But if you want an identical view, so the same filter, the same sort, the same properties in the same order, and particularly when you want to be able to adjust that and have the adjustment carried over everywhere else that the sync block is implemented, 
then a sync block is the perfect solution for that. It gives you a lot of capability to have a mirrored table or database of any type, calendar, timeline view, Kanban board view, all of these can be synced across multiple locations. That's super useful. Perhaps some of the more obvious uses, say we wanted a header navigation on many pages. So in the PPV system, but this could be done for any public website, it could be done for any internal working space. So we had our action zone with a link to it, and our alignment zone with a link to it, and our mind expansion dashboard with a link to it and all of our pillars or any of our pillars across there. Then you place a link in each of these, you just link it by you know, either pasting the link or going to the link feature here. And now each of these is a link. You can now take this block and put it at the top of all the pages you want that navigation header to be on. You could do the same thing with footers or any content within the middle. One of the uses that I envision most commonly using is in our knowledge vault within my mind expansion dashboard. So we've got all the topics that we're gathering knowledge learning about getting deeper and deeper insight into. We collect all that knowledge in the knowledge vault topic entries. And so now I can imagine going into the systems thinking entry, which has got a lot of work in there. When I have a note or section that's relevant to more than one knowledge vault topic entry, you can now do that in multiple places. So let's say passage here is also relevant to design thinking. It's just an example. So we go turn into sync block. Now we got a sync block, we copy that. We go over to our link to the design thinking one because we're linking to other topics that are similar. We go over to design thinking and we can now add that here. And any work we do in this block will be updated across all the other Knowledge Vault topic entries that this is a part of. So this is going to be synced as we work on it in one space. It'll be up to date in all the spaces. And if you want to unsync it, then you just hit unsync and you can undo it. Of course, the alignment zone, we have our guiding principles here. I have made that a synced block. And now I'm adding that to a template. We're now editing the weekly review template. Each weekly review, step number one, is to review our guiding principles. So we have the guiding principles embedded here with a synced block. If I am reading these, doing my quick review of the guiding principles at the beginning of every weekly review, that's how we stay close to our guiding principles. And now if I have any thoughts or revisions I wanna make, I update it here and it's automatically updated back here in the original source in the guiding principles. So that keeps everything in sync. So this sync block of my guiding principles is being added to all my weekly reviews now. I've just started, so it's only been a few weeks as I've been testing this feature, but now it's going to be in all of my weekly reviews. So you can put it in a template, replicate it, and all of it will sync together and update the source guiding principles in the alignment zone as I'm going through it each week. That keeps our guiding principles top of mind so we stay close to them. That's part of what this review is all about. And this just scratches the surface. There's so many possibilities. So I wanted to make you aware of it so you can start building it into your systems and workspaces. And would love to hear how you're using it. If you have any innovative or creative thoughts on how you're applying it or can envision applying it in the future, leave some comments below, perhaps a collection down there that we can share with each other for ideas on how to further leverage this new feature. Because I think it's really cool. I think it's great that Notion has taken this clumsy hack and made it a real feature that's easy to use and given it more capability. So let's have a conversation in the comments below about how to use this best. We'll be getting back to a few more API videos then expanding the broader range of topics on this channel very soon. If this is of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos, leave thoughts or questions below, or join us in our online community for a broader conversation. That's all at yearzero.io, where you'll also find information on the Notion Life OS course. And please hit like if you found this video valuable. I also read a newsletter on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter. You can, of course, unsubscribe at any time, but I hope you'll give it a chance. I work super hard to pack it with a lot of valuable insight. Thanks for watching. Lots more to come.